Hello, I'm Emma Patterson. I'm the Principal Solicitor at Patterson Law. We are National Motoring Solicitors and we cover the whole of England and Wales. We don't deal with matters in Scotland, but we cover the rest of the UK and we have around five to ten cases in courts around the country every day of the week. We deal with motoring offences. We do not specialise in any other area of law. There are 22 of us and we devote the entirety of our time to defending motorists around the UK. The following is an outline of the statutory provisions in relation to a particular road traffic offence. If you have a specific question, then please call us on 01626 359 800 and we will be happy to go through the specifics of your case with you and to apply the legislation as appropriate. We hope that you find the video useful. Um, the law is quite technical, so if you do want specific advice, we will always do a free advice call with you on 01626 359 800. Thank you. Hi, my name's Emma Patterson. I'm the Principal Solicitor at Patterson Law. I'm going to talk to you briefly about Section 35 of the Road Traffic Offenders Act. This is otherwise known as a totting up ban or a penalty point disqualification. Um, you have to draw a distinction between the Road Traffic Act, which mainly contains different types of offences. Um, for example, Section 2 is dangerous driving. Section 3 is driving without due care and attention. Section 143 is driving without insurance. And the Road Traffic Offenders Act, which tends to contain all the procedural legislation. So Section 35 specifically deals with the issue of penalty point disqualifications. And here it is in front of us. Um, I'm talking without a script and I'm going to just chat about this section and I'm hoping people that are worried about the risk of totting up bans will watch this and find it useful. Um, if you need to have a chat with us about the risk of a penalty point ban then you can watch this and learn a little bit more or you could call us on 01626 359 800 and either myself or one of my colleagues will do a free advice call with you to assess the specifics of your case. But here we have it, Section 35, Disqualification for Repeat Offences. So it's basically about the fact that when you commit road traffic offences that carry the risk of penalty points, if you accumulate 12 penalty points or more, and here you have it, the penalty points to be taken into account on that occasion, number 12 or more, if you do that within a three-year period, then the court will consider disqualifying you for six months under the totting up rules. Um, if it's a second totting up ban within three years, then the minimum ban goes from six months to 12 months. Here's that section here. It says here where the penalty points to be taken into account on that occasion, number 12 or more, the court must order him to be disqualified for not less than the minimum period. And here we have the definition of the minimum period. The minimum period is six months if no previous disqualification uh, imposed on the offender is to be taken into account and one year if one and two years if more than one such disqualification is to be taken into account and they are taken into account if they have if you've been disqualified for 56 days or more within the three years immediately preceding the commission of the latest offence. Okay, so that, that's the issue of a totting ban. Normally it's for six months. Um, I've never seen a scenario where somebody gets a totting ban and it's a first totting ban and it's more than six months. So whilst it says the minimum is six months, it tends to be six months for a first totting ban. Okay, so if you have a look um, at section 35, um, this is a, a really important under section, section 1. This is a really important issue here because most people think that the only way that you can avoid a totting ban is to argue exceptional hardship. That's not actually true and we've had a few cases where district judges and magistrates have agreed with us. If you read this section carefully, what it says is the court must order him to be disqualified for not less than the minimum period unless the court is satisfied having regard to the circumstances that there are grounds for mitigating the normal consequences, normal consequences of the conviction and the normal consequences is a six month ban. OK, and then that gives the court a discretion if they think, think that there are grounds for mitigating the normal consequences to disqualify for a shorter period or not at all. OK, so that's important. 
So the court can avoid giving you a totting ban if they think that there are circumstances that allow them to mitigate normal consequences. It goes on later on down the section, which is the part that everybody refers to, and most motoring purported motoring lawyers will claim that this is the only way you can avoid a totting ban. It's not. There are other ways. Um, and it says here that this is where you get the concept of an exceptional hardship argument. No account is to be taken under subsection 1 above of any of the following circumstances. So if you remember, it said circumstances that allow you to mitigate the normal consequences. And then it goes on to say that you can't take account of any suggestion that the offence is not a serious one. The importance of this bit is that totting up bans are about the cumulative effect of penalty points rather than the offence itself being a serious one. So you can't go into court and say, oh, it was only 36 and a 30, um, so you shouldn't disqualify me because it wasn't a serious offence. The whole point of a totting up ban is it's about the cumulative effect of offences rather than that the offence itself is a serious one. There's a different kind of disqualification for dealing with serious endorsable offences, and that's called a discretionary ban, and I'll do a different chat about that on the discretionary ban section. Um, and then this is the really important bit. No account shall be taken under subsection 1 above of any of the following circumstances, and then it says hardship. So they won't take account of hardship unless it's exceptional hardship, and that's where we get the famous phrase exceptional hardship argument. Okay. And it also says that the court will disregard any circumstances which have been used previously in relation to an exceptional hardship argument within the three years immediately preceding the conviction. So the date you go into court, if you try to make an exceptional hardship argument and you've previously avoided a totting ban using the same grounds, the court will refuse to allow you to use those grounds. And the court will often go to the effort of getting an extract of the court register from the previous court if they can see from your driving record that you've previously avoided a, a totting ban to make sure that you don't use the same reasons again. OK, so if we go back up to the top, um, we're looking at the penalty points to be taken into account. This is really tricky as well. This is an important factor. So I'm going to change to section 29, which defines which penalty points are taken into account. Um, and this is basically the section that tells us how to work out whether or not penalty points add up. And if you look at this section, you can see that the court will disregard any penalty points that are related. It's a really tricky, wor trickily worded sentence. It's difficult to, to read it. There are often double negatives in legislation. But basically, the court will disregard any penalty points that were imposed for offences that were committed more than three years before another. So basically, it's offence date to offence date. So even if by the time you get to court, the penalty points on your licence have dropped off, if the penalty points were active on your licence at the time of this alleged offence, the, the offence the court is dealing with, then they add up. So we've had clients in the past who've lost three or six penalty points in between committing the most recent offence and ending up at court. But the legislation states that you look at offence date to offence date. So if those penalty points were active on your licence at the time of the alleged offence, then they will add up. And if the cumulative effect of the penalty points is that they add up to 12 or more, then you get a six-month ban unless you can persuade the court that there are circumstances that allow them to mitigate the normal consequences of conviction. And that's normally uh, by arguing exceptional hardship, but not always. There are, there are exceptions to the rule. There is no statutory definition of what is or what isn't exceptional hardship. Every case is decided on its own merit. There's a lot of chatter on the internet saying losing your job can't be exceptional hardship. If you went into court and said, well, I'm just going to lose my job and you didn't talk about any of the knock-on effects of that on your family, on your ability to pay your mortgage, then absolutely the court would probably not agree unless it was a job that you've worked hard for or you've spent a lot of time um, dealing with and it would be very difficult for you to replace that job or perhaps you have pensions tied up in that job. Every case is really decided on its own merit and a lot of the cases we argue exceptional hardship on are all about losing job, not being able to support family, not being able to have contact with children, not being able to fulfil responsibilities to elderly re relatives. Uh, there is no definitive list and if you want to have a chat then give me a call on 01626 359 800 and I'll happily talk or one of my team will happily talk 
to you about the specifics of your case and we promise we'll give you a genuine assessment of your prospects of success and we may actually be able to put your mind at rest so that whilst you're waiting for the summons to arrive um, you can have peace of mind that you have a decent argument um, in order to try and avoid that six-month ban. But give us a call if you need some help.